viewers. Welcome to Life in Dental Care. I am Dr. Mohamad Aron Singh. In this video, I will talk about periapical x-ray, the normal anatomical structure of a periapical x-ray. You can see here, there is a small size x-ray of teeth and their associated supporting structure. This is called intraoral periapical x-ray or IOPA. This IOPA or small size intraoral periapical x-ray is an essential tool, diagnostic tool for dental surgeon. This small x-ray is also cost effective and any patient can bear the cost. This is very much important x-ray. In this x-ray, we can see the normal anatomical landmarks on a structure such as the teeth. There are root morphology and the periodontal ligament space of the teeth. You can see here, this is a radiolution line and here the periodontal ligament are present. Here, here you can see another periodontal ligament space and the lamina dura. Lamina dura is a small, very thin calcified bony landmark. You can see here. this is a radio opaque line extending from the crest of the angular ridge to the apex of the teeth and it is lies surrounding the teeth in the road from one crest of the angular ridge to another crest of the angular ridge. The pulp chamber, we can see the normal structure of the pulp chamber, normal morphology of the pulp chamber, not the structure, and the root morphology also. And the associated bone. In periapical x-ray, we can see the trabecular pattern on the bone of the jaw. This is a trabecular pattern of bone. You can see here. This is an interradicular bone between the roots of the multiroted teeth. You can see here the normal periphical X-ray. By periapical x-ray, we can see the developing teeth present below the deciduous teeth. This deciduous tooth was treated and rent endodontically, and here is the developing permanent successor. And we can see the developing condition of the permanent successor and the root resorption extent of the deciduous steel. This is the upper anterior segment showing four teeth and the bones of the jaws alveolar ridge. This is the nasal passes, nasal arrow showing the radiolucent This is mandibular anterior segment showing one, two, three, four, five teeth. This is the lamina dura. This radiolution line is the periodontal ligament space. This radiolution line within the two is the root canal space. And this is the trabecular pattern of the mandibular bone. This is another periapical x-ray, you can see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 teeth, one is partially seen and here is canine, this is first premolar, second premolar, the first mandibular molar teeth and here you can see missing of the second permanent molar teeth and that's why the inclination of the third molar. 
This is an important periapical X-ray. You can see here, one, two, three, four, five teeth are present in this periapical X-ray. We can see here, this is a large radiolucent cavity. Sometimes this normal anatomical landmark is diagnosed as a pathological cavity. This is misdiagnosed and was uh, done by mistake. Actually, this is the periapical x ray of maxillary posterior teeth, including first and second premolar. This is first molar, second molar, and this is the third molar of the mandibular teeth. And this radiolucent cavity is the maxillary sinus. You can see here the border of the maxillary sinus. This maxillary air sinus containing here, and that's why this is radiolucent cavity. From periapical x ray, we can diagnose the different types of diseases such as occlusal caries, the proximal caries, the root caries, and the periodontal health such as the alveolar bone loss, vertical. Here you can see the horizontal bone loss here, and we can also see the vertical bone loss. Here you can see the vertical loss of the alveolar ridge or the alveolar bone. Internal periapical x ray is used for the uh, diagnosis of the different types of the teeth associated with the palpal pathology, such as the periapical pathologies, cyst, small cyst, and apical pathologies, maybe any type of tumor and granuloma. Integral periapical x ray also an important diagnostic tool for the determination of the working length during root canal treatment. We need to done the integral periapical x ray for determina determination of the length of the root canal. For working length determination, an important step for root canal treatment. An endodontic misshape also diagnosed in most cases by using periapical x ray. Here you can see instrument separation beyond the apex. It might be a while treating the tooth and anodontically, this instrument separation was occurring. This is anodontic mission was diagnosed by periapical x-ray. Periapical x-ray can be diagnosed for the disease of the dental and also periodontal problems. Periodontal status can be seen from a periapical x-ray. You can see here the pocket formation here and the vertical uh, horizontal bonus here and the periapical pathology here. You can see the crown morphology and gross caries of the teeth. Before destruction of any teeth we need to do a periapical x-ray while doing one, two or three teeth placed adjacent to each other. But 
if you want to see the both jaws and the dentition, we need to do orthopentomograph or OPZ X-ray. But OBJ X-ray is a rough X-ray and represents the magnification of the teeth and the associated structure. But in comparison, in contrast of OPZ, the periapical X-ray shows more precise size of the teeth and the associated structure. Thus, the magnification is lesser, and we can rely on periapical X-ray. For diagnosing any kinds of dental and periodontal periapical diseases, periapical X-ray is essential. Biting X-ray also done for diagnosing the proximal caries, and this is very important technique while diagnosis is difficult. So I think this video will be helpful for you and share this video with your friends, subscribe my channel for more updated videos. If you have any question, please leave it.